So what I'm shooting for here is... Oh! <laughs> Just light hitting the cabin, and not even the whole thing, or the shed rather. Um, and splashing onto the ground again. I like that effect. I think it's, I think it's uh, very attractive and dramatic. Uh, I'll just talk about the colors in the roof. Um, I know that these boards are bending in a crazy way. You'd think there'd be more broken ones in there, but uh, I uh, shouldn't worry about that stuff. Uh, the roof I've used, oh my goodness, in the highlighted areas, um, yellow ochre, titanium white, and a bit just honestly such a small bit of uh, ultramarine blue and the, the actual the actual lightest spots a couple of brush strokes that are the lightest are just they're just titanium white and, and yellow ochre and then we've gone into here we've added uh, um, a little bit of burnt sienna a bit of white and then I've made some purple with cobalt blue Alizarin Crimson, and moving over to the left, we've just gone more uh, raw umber. Um, so that's the medley of of of, of colors that are, that are in the roof. The walls, in the shadows, cobalt blue and uh, cad red medium and white, and that's in the shade, in the sun, um, didn't go too crazy. Cad red medium and a lizard and crimson and yellow ochre to keep it a little bit subdued. I may end up using, well, no, actually, I already have used a little bit of cad yellow pale with uh, cad red medium, just a couple of spots. I may still, I probably will still in the step six highlight. A couple of of, uh, of spots, just using cad red medium and cad yellow pale. Foreground, this little slash that I'm starting now. We're going to start with uh, um, cad yellow pale, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, bits of uh, ultramarine blue. So we're actually using the same colors as we have in the background, but less ultramarine blue and more of the shiny stuff. More yellow ochre, more cad yellow pale, more white. And now I'm going to I'll probably keep it, you know, I'll allow that sun to splash on an area here. Then we'll cool it down, and in doing so, I'll go from ultramarine blue. I'll probably go to cobalt blue and burnt sienna, and work my way down. And then the grand finale. Again, uh, yes, I know it's sort of a close-up of a cabin, but it's a very small painting. Don't want to get too detailed. I'll probably just indicate some boards, some sort of, you know, structural uh, um, forms in there, and that's about it. Small painting, done quickly. It's fun. I put a little bit of. Uh, Cobalt blue and red sienna in the foreground here. Uh, a little bit of white to that. I don't want it to be too strong. I don't want the blue to be too strong.
Thus the burnt sienna. Sienna. And we'll fill in this little strip. No, I'll leave that. You know, I think I'm going to just leave it that simple in the foreground. I don't see any reason to add any more to it. Frames in our light area nicely. Just get little bits of... I just have little dribs and drabs of skin stuck in my cobalt blue. Every couple of strokes I have to clean something out of it. And I think again I'll just hint at some form of something inside. I'm not going to try to explain what it is. That can be up to the viewer's imagination. I'm using a little bit of uh, Cobalt blue and raw umber at this point. I've loaded the brush very lightly because at the beginning of my stroke, like right there, I don't want to end up with a blob of paint. <laughs> Very careful to not run into this light, this light colored post that I have on the edge. Alright, now for the rest of this little spot. We will use ultramarine blue. That's kind of my go-to in the darkest areas is ultramarine blue with a hint of burnt sienna. And a little bit of white, very little, and, and really trying to make sure I don't overmix it. Straight ultramarine blue and white would be very high chroma. I don't want that in the dark areas. So that's why I prefer to use that's why I prefer to add a little bit of of the burnt sienna in there.
back to my cobalt blue and raw umber mixture and just lay in a vertical stroke. Okay. Now back again to my ultramarine and burnt sienna. Just touching these very dark areas. I think that'll do right there. Um, okay. Now this is very black. So I'll just put a hint of color in there as well. Now, <clears throat> I think that I could groom the background a little bit. Uh, I, 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 painting's okay. I think this could stand to become just a little bit more interesting. Maybe on this side, using some of these shapes to catch a little bit of light here and there. Okay, I uh, went a bit bluer just on the bottom here, and because I did that, I'm so tempted to carry it over to this side. Uh, don't know that I will. I might just leave it as is. Also, raise the value. You know, went in with the same colors, um, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and a hint of uh, ultramarine blue. To carve into these into these areas, so you know, to me, it kind of appears as though this, you know, along this boundary and this way in the treetops is pushed back further and catching a little bit more light, and these are more clo uh, these are closer to to uh, to the back of this retired granary. <laughs> um, Yeah, I think, I think I might just need a signature and that's it. Uh, you know, I, I, I sat down and thought, oh, I just want to rub out this stump that I had sitting here and one on the edge. And so I did that. And then I immediately forget about everything. And I thought, oh, yes, I want to start working in here now. So that's what I did. And of course, I forgot to turn the camera on. But anyway, that's, I'm sure that's okay. Um, you get what I'm you get what I'm going for here and I think I'm gonna call that a finished painting I'm just gonna back up here oh no I'll take you off the stand and zoom in that's what I'll do well I think I've gone through my colors as I've painted. If I have not, and if you have any questions about them, please ask. Um, happy to answer. You know, as always, when you get up close, it's a mess. It doesn't look like much until you back off. Okay, that's it for that. Thanks for coming along. Talk to you soon. Oh, actually, I think I'm going to include this statement. If you like it, please hit the like button. <laughs> or if you like the, the video, please hit the like button. Uh, I, I hate the whole e-begging thing, but it does really help uh, the algorithm to... Uh, 
to recognize it as as a video that that people are watching and then it helps to uh, expose uh, my videos to, to to a larger audience anyway thanks and have a good day